My name's Adrian and today we're going to look at this pressure washer. Now this particular one is the JCB-PW for pressure washer 7532P. P standing for a petrol driven engine model. So I'm going to open the box, lay the contents on the table so you can see exactly what you get. So I've laid the contents out on the table and as you can see we have the main frame itself with the engine and the pump in it. There is going to be some assembly but I'll take you through each step. So of course we have the two wheels. We have the pressure hose here, which is a heavy duty hose. A heavy duty lance here, which is in two parts. We'll show you how to put that together. I have a set of various tips here. There are five of them. They fit in the front of the machine, which will show you that with different angles. Water inlet fitting, spark plug spanner. And then there's a bag here with all the nuts, bolts and fastenings that we're going to need when we assemble it. And then finally, we have the user manuals. Now we do recommend that you read the user manuals thoroughly before use. So there are actually three of them with this model, so it's all covered. First of all, we have the one for the machine itself, how to operate your pressure washer, the do's and don'ts, and how it operates. Secondly, this one that refers to the engine specifically, what you need to know about the engine. And thirdly, this one relating to the pump as well. So we've got it covered at all angles here. And of course, we have the upper handle as well. Very simple to fit, we'll show you that. So there's a few tools you're going to need for assembly of the machine. Now I happen to have a 10 millimeter socket, a 10 millimeter spanner, two spanners would do fine. And I do have also an adjustable spanner here, which is slightly larger. We'll use this for the wheel nuts. And it opens up to around 25 millimeters. That should be more than enough. If you do happen to have the correct spanner for the nut, feel free to use the correct spanner. Most people would have an adjustable spanner that will open big enough. That's why I'm demonstrating with this. So, I've laid the contents of the accessories bag on the table here. So you should have these three yellow brackets, two axles here with two washers each and two nuts. Those are for the wheels. We're coming on to those next. Two of the axle retaining R clips. There are two hand wheels, six bolts with washers and nuts, and then two slightly larger bolts as well. So this will all become apparent as we put it together. So I've got one of the axles here. As you can see, there's a hole in it here, and there's a hole on the inside face of the tube that it fits in. So I'll just fit the axle in, line up the holes, and then fit the R-clip down in, and that's locked the axle in position. So at this point now, we can fit the one wheel. The other side is going to be an exact mirror image of this. So as you can see, there's a flush side of the wheel, and there's a side with a larger boss. So if I just undo the nut, I'll leave one washer on, I'll fit the large boss side onto the axle, then the washer back on, then the nut back on. And I'll screw it up so far. Now this is the point where I'll get the adjustable spanner and tighten this up, but I'll show you how to tighten it. Okay, so I'm gonna tighten up this nut clockwise. It's a conventional thread, and I'll tighten it right up not, it's not going to be tight, it is a nylock nut, and you can see it's stopped. And of course that's going to be over tight because the wheel won't rotate. So I'm just going to go back one flat. There. That now allows the wheel to rotate without it being loose. And the nylock will stop the nut coming undone. So the next thing we're going to do, that both wheels are in place, is put the upper handle on. So it slips over the two lugs here, no problem at all. And then what I'll do is take one of the larger bolts, and you'll see there's got a hexagon head. And on the other side of the tube here, there's a little hexagon that it'll drop into that stops it rotating. And then I'll just fit one of the hand wheels in position. I'll put that one on loosely. Just do the same on the other side. Okay. And that's it, that's the handle fitted. And as you can see, it's very quick to remove if you want to compact it down for storage. So as you can see, we're gonna fit these yellow hooks next. There are three sizes, large, medium, and small. So let's start with the small hook, and I'll show you where that one goes. Okay, so I've taken two of the six remaining bolts, take a nut and washer off each. So I've got two of these bolts. I'll fit the bolts through the holes in the bracket and through the holes here on the front of the frame at the lower edge. Just line up the bolts through the two holes. And then on the back of each one, I'll fit a washer. And then just loosely fit a nut on each. Okay, once I've got them in place, 
You can either use two spanners. I happen to have a ratchet and a spanner just to hold the nut on the outside here. Again, these are nylock nuts, they're stainless fittings. Tighten down on the two bolts and make sure they're securely in place. Now it is worthwhile after you've been using your machine for a while, just to go around and check all the fastenings that you fit. So that's the lower bracket. We'll move on to the upper bracket on the handle at the top. Okay, so middle sized bracket, exactly the same procedure. Two bolts through, through the handle here. Pop them through the hole so they come out the other side. Fit a washer on each, fit a nut on each, and tighten them up as I've just shown you. So again, the third and largest bracket. Into the pipe, two bolts again. Locate them through the holes in the pipework, washers and nuts on the inside. It is worth noting that all three of these brackets, this L shape, are pointing up on all of them. So, the unit as I described earlier comes with these five different tips for the lance. And they are 0 degrees, 10 degrees, 15 and 25 degrees. So obviously the 0 degrees would give you a very fine point, um, basically a single point jet of water. And again, 10 degrees, slightly wider, 15 and 25, wider and wider jets of water. Obviously, you would only use the pinpoint one if you were removing paint off brickwork or something like that. Um, and obviously, the wider the jet, the more delicate the nozzle. The narrower the angle, the more uh, intrusive the nozzle. So be very careful when using a powerful pressure washer such as this. You wouldn't typically use a zero degrees on car paintwork. You may actually damage the paint. You'd use wider, wider jets for that sort of thing. And then finally, we have the black nozzle. So this is the low pressure nozzle. So if we're using detergent, we're sucking detergent, traffic fill remover, whatever detergent you were using through the unit, you would always use the black tip to allow the detergent to be brought through. And these all store quite nicely in the front of the machine. As you can see, and they all store and keep in there quite nicely. So the final fitting that comes in the bag is this hose connector. So your typical garden hose connecting fittings will fit onto here for connecting up. Now if you hold the nut, screw it in clockwise until you can screw it no more, hold it tight and then just nip the nut up. That'll be enough to seal this fitting up. So you just connect straight up with your garden hose making sure there's no kinks in it and that's how the water gets supplied to the machine. Just one thing of note, if you find at any stage that you get a lack of water coming through, you'll see that there's a little strainer filter in here which can be pulled out and cleaned. So one often problem we often get is that if this filter gets blocked with debris from a garden hose or what have you, then it's quite common that this could become blocked. So just be wary that there is a little filter in there, a little thumb filter. So I'll just fit that back on again. And there we are. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, the lance comes in two pieces. You simply push the rod down onto there, screw the hand wheel anti-clockwise. My hand is fine, that's now tight, and we can pull the little rubber sleeve up and over, and that's the two halves of the lance connected. So the pressure hose, uh, all quick release fittings on this. It has a male end and a female end, the brass coloured end here. Again, if I just take the lance, the lance connects straight into this fitting, pull back the outer sleeve, push in, release, and that's connected. To disconnect, pull back the outer sleeve, lance comes out. It's as simple as that. So that's the connection made. And again, if I go to the other end, you'll see on the pump here, exactly the same method. Push back the collar, push in, release the collar, that's it, connected. When you want to release, push back the collar, pull it out. Never try and remove these fittings when there's pressure in the system, when you're using it. Always make sure that you've switched the engine off, you've released any residual pressure out of the gun so there's no more water flowing, ideally turned off the water at the mains, then that is the point where you can disconnect. When there's pressure inside them, it would be dangerous to try and disconnect. The pump is shipped to you with pump oil in it, and it does have this red plug. So I'll just pull this bag off the top and you'll see this is a transport plug. There's no breather in it and it seals the pump should the box be upside down, anything like that, and it stops oil coming out. In the little bag here, we have the breathable plug that needs to be fitted. 
So there's the breathable plug. I'll just unscrew the transit plug, the little red plug. Normally only hand tight these. I can take that out, fit the breathable plug and screw it into place. And there we are. So it's very important that we fit the breather plug. It allows air within the pump to it, when it expands to escape so that it's not blowing seals on the pump. Okay, so we're coming back to the hooks. Your hose stores there when not in use for transport and your lance stores there. So it's all compact and you keep everything together without losing anything.